Hello mga kajani, Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Again, this is Sir Robinson Ipulen, your partner in learning mathematics. But before I begin my video, do not forget to click the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if my video helps you. Okay, so in my previous video, if you watched that one, I presented to you different special limit rules. Okay, so these are the three. Three different special limit rules involving only sine and cosine. Why am I using only sine and cosine here? Simply because all the limit uh, trigonometric function can be expressed as a function of sine and cosine. Okay, so these are the three that I presented to you in my uh, previous video. The limitation of sine x over x as x approaches to zero is equal to one. So that is always equal to one whenever you involve this one and your x approaches to zero. Make it sure that the uh, variable inside the sine function is the same with the variable that's ever in the denominator. Say for example, that is uh, sine 3x over 3x. So meaning 3x and 3x are the same. And take note that x approaches to zero, the limitation is equal to one. That is the special limit uh, theorem that I presented to you last time. For the second one, same thing for uh, special limit theorem number one, or rule number one, it is just that uh, uh, special limit number two is the reciprocal of our special limit number one. Okay, so same thing, make it sure that the variable in the numerator is the same with the variable inside the sine function. Okay, inside the sine function, they are the same. And take note that x approaches to zero. So meaning the limit is also one. So meaning this is the same as 3x over sine 3x. They are the same, meaning the limit is equal to one. Okay, take note that the x approaches to zero. So that is the second special limit theorems of trigonometric function. Okay, for number three, that is the limitation of one over cosine. Okay, for number three, that is the limitation of one over cosine over x as x approaches to uh, zero. So take note that this number three that is cosine function. Make it sure that this theorem is applicable whenever uh, the variable inside the cosine function is x. And that is the same with what's ever in the denominator. Meaning they are the same. Automatically the limit of that function is equal to zero. So say for example 1 over cosine 5x over 5x. Since 5x here is the same with 5x uh, inside the cosine function, automatically the limit that one is zero when x approaches to zero. These are the rules that I presented to you, just a review. So this time, let's have some examples. But before I proceed to examples to those special limit theorem, let me present to you some common question asked while they are watching my video, okay, regarding the trigonometric function. Take note that sine x is not the same. This is not equal when I say x sine okay they are not the same you cannot put x outside this uh, trigonometric sine function okay same as sine squared x is not equal to uh is not equal to sine 2x they are not equal because sine here is uh that is the power of sine the squared here is the power of sine while here we have a function 2x inside the sine function because sine squared x, that is equal to sine x times sine x. Meaning we have two different sine x. Okay? So same thing here when I say sine 2x, that is not the same when I say 2 sine x. That's different. Okay? So these are the common questions. Take note that sine x, sine squared x, and sine 2x are different form of trigonometric functions okay so if you have more questions do not hesitate to comment that one or feel free to send me a private message okay okay let's try some example involving the special limit theorems of trigonometric function what if your limit looks like this the limitation of sine 5x over x as x approaches to zero okay this is example number one what if uh, your function looks like that take note that uh, your uh, term inside the sine function is not the same with the denominator as, as you can observe that this x approaches to zero 
once you substitute directly zero here, it will become indeterminate. As I told you before, once the the limit is indeterminate, we have to find ways to find the limit of that function. So meaning you cannot conclude directly that the limit of this function is one simply because 5x is not equal to x. So as you can observe in our limit, it should be equal sine x over x as x approaches to zero. It should be equal. As you can observe, they are not equal. What are you going to do here is to find ways. At least you can use this rule that I presented to you. So as you can observe, we lock 5 here. Okay? We need 5 in the denominator to conclude that the limit is 1. What are you going to do is, you have to uh, multiply both numerator and denominator what is needed in your term. Since I need 5 here, so meaning I have to multiply 5 over 5. Okay, because I need 5 in my denominator. In short, what you need in your term to, uh, to make use of this theorem is what uh, that's the number that you're going to multiply in both numerator and denominator. So since I need 5, so I have to multiply 5 over 5. Why uh, I have, is it a mathematic, mathematically correct? Yes, because once you divide 5 divided by 5, that is 1. And we believe we have an invisible 1 uh, uh, beside our term. Okay? So afterwards, after you find uh, what is needed there, is you have to uh, multiply this 5 to your numerator and 5 to your denominator. If we're going to multiply that 1, do not multiply 5 at the 5 inside the sine function. That's a, that's a violation in mathematics, meaning that it's inside, so since 5 is outside, you have to multiply here besides sine x. So it will become 5 sine 5x. Again, do not multiply inside because 5x here is an inside function, while 5 here is an outside function. You cannot do it like that, okay? So what you're going to do is to simply put 5 beside sine 5x and copy 5x, okay? So here, you can multiply 5x times, uh, 5 times x, that is 5x. So meaning, that is the new phase of our function. So therefore, it will become the limitation of 5 sine 5x all over 5x as x approaches to 0. The question is, is, is sine 5x over x equal to 5 sine 5x over 5x? Yes, they are equal. Meaning they are just the same. We are finding ways to uh, we are finding ways to make this limit useful in solving trigonometric function. Okay, so the question is, what is uh, what is the next step? After you uh, find ways that to make this one equal, what are you going to do is to find another ways in solving that one. We believe that we can able to separate this one. We can able to separate this one as 5 times sine 5x over 5x. Okay? We believe we can able to separate this one. Just, uh, just factor 5 outside this one. Because we believe we have a denominator as 1 in our 5. Okay? Okay. Okay. So we can able to factor that one out. So since we can able to factor that one out, meaning this one is the same as this one. Just factor out five, whatever number here. Okay. So we can able to factor. So the uh, the new version of our uh, function now is the limitation of five times sine 5x over 5x as x approaches to 0. Okay? So from here, we multiply 5 over 5. This is now the new phase. We believe we can able to separate this one as in this form. And from this form, we have this new version of our function. So we believe that we've learned lots of theorems, rules in the previous one. We can able to we can able to distribute that one using the product rule. The limitation of 5 as x approaches to 0, that is what? That is still 5. Why 5? Because that is constant rule. Again, the limitation of 5 as x approaches to 0, that is 5. Using the constant rule because 5 is a plainly constant. You copy multiplication sign, 
the limitation of sine 5x over 5x as x approaches to 0. Using this rule, we really because 5x is equal to our denominator here. So meaning it is uh, we can able to use that one. So meaning the limitation of sine 5x over 5x as x approaches to 0, that is equal to 1. Very good. Okay. So 5 times 1, that is now 5. Therefore, the limit of our function is now equal to 5. That's how we solve every time we deal that kind of function. Okay, again and again, that's example number 1. Okay, without further ado, let's solve example number 2. My example number 2, your function looks like this. Limitation of sine 2x over sine 7x as x approaches to 0. How are we going to solve this kind of function? We believe that if we're going to use direct substitution method in this problem, it will become sine 2 times 0 that is sine 0 over sine 0 that is 0 over 0 and that is in determinate form meaning once the function is in determinate form then it conclude directly that the limit does not exist what are you going to do is to find wave same thing that we did uh, last time uh, in solving this one you have to uh, use this rule the, uh, the uh, same rule with, uh, with what I used in my previous example that is the limitation of sine x over x as x approaches to 0 that is equal to 1. Let's make use of this one. The question is, how am I making this one uh, to make sine 7x equal to 2x? Okay? That's not what are we going to do. What are we going to do is we separately solve numerator and denominator. Okay? We're going to solve it separately. So meaning, uh, I am going to write it sine 2x, that is my numerator and sine 7x that is my denominator that's how you solve that one you have to solve that one separately for your numerator and denominator Look, uh, as you can observe in order for me to use this kind uh, this rule is I have I, uh, I have to make it sure that my denominator is also 2x same thing here that my denominator is also 7x right so meaning in order to make use of this uh, limit theorems, I have to make it sure that my denominator here is 2x. Meaning, I have to divide, uh, multiply both numerator and denominator, what is needed here. Uh, as you can observe, I need 2x. So meaning, I have to divide both numerator and denominator by 2x. 2x over 2x. Is it correct? Is it mathematically, mathematically correct? Yes, because 2x divided by 2x is also 1. So we have invisible 1 there. Okay, so again, what is needed, you have to multiply. If I'm going to multiply that one, sine 2x times 2x, again, do not multiply 2x inside 2x. You have to write it beside your sine 2x. It will become 2x sine 2x. That is for your, your numerator. And for my denominator, that is now 2x. Because I have 1 here, 1 times 2x, that is 2x. That's how you did it. That is now your new numerator. Okay? I believe you can able to separate that one. You can able to separate as 2x times sine 2x over 2x. You just factor what is beside your sine. With that is 2x. You just factor it one. So as you can observe sine 2x and 2x is now the same. You can able to use that kind of uh, this uh, theorem or rules in solving trigonometric function. Therefore, after you solve for it, uh, again and again, sine 2x, that is your numerator. Okay? After you do it like this, you, uh, you just copy that one and solve for your denominator. And my denominator is sine 7, sin 7x. Same thing. I have to make it sine 7x uh, make use of this theorem. That is, to make, it my, to make my denominator equal to the inside function of my sine. Same thing, same process in this numerator, in this uh, version. I have to multiply what is needed in my denominator. I need what? I need 7x. That's right. I mean, I have to divide 7x and by divide 7x. Again, is it mathematically correct? Yes. That is mathematically correct. Because 7x divided by 7x, that is 1. And we have invisible 1 beside. So after that one, you multiply numerator to numerator. So 7x times sine 7x, that is now 7x sine 7x all over 7 times 1, 7x times 1, that is 7x. 
So that is now my new form of denominator. Take note, this is my numerator, ha? Do not forget. And this is my denominator. Okay? So after that one, same thing. I can able to separate. I can able to separate this one as like this. So mini factor out what's, uh, whatever beside your function. So meaning it will become 7x times sine 7x over 7x. Okay, this is my new numerator and my denominator. The question is, is the theorem now useful? Yes, because I have now sine 7x, 7x, they are now equal. Sine 2x and 2x, they are now equal. That is my new numerator and denominator to make use of this one. Okay, so I have to erase this one. So I have to erase this one to make use because I've lost, don't have any space anymore. Okay. Okay, so let's copy that one. This is my new numerator and this is my new denominator. So it will become the limitation of, the limitation of, 2x times sine 2x over 2x divided by for my denominator which is 7x sine 7x over 2x as x approaches to 0. Numerator and denominator, I, I need to erase this one. Okay, so meaning... Uh, from here, I simplified using my rules that I presented to you. So this one, that is now my new form. Question is, is, uh, is this equal to sine sin 2x over sine 7 and equal to this form? Yes, we just do something uh, mathematically uh, ways to make it, uh, you, uh, to make everything clear or to make everything useful using our theorems, okay? So the question is, if I'm going to substitute directly zero, Will it make my my function indeterminate? Yes. Because once I substituted 2 times x, 2 or 2 times 0, that's 0. 7 times 0, that's 0. Multiply 2 here, that's 0, 0. So that is still indeterminate. So meaning, do not use the substitution directly. What, I, what, uh, what are you going to do is to observe your function. If your function is, there is something to be simplified. As you can observe, this is already multiplication, right? Uh, we separated one earlier. So we can, uh, this is now multiplication. The question is, can we cancel x, x here? Yes, we can able to divide it one. So 2x divided by 7x, we can able to cancel x. So we don't have x in anymore in this form. So meaning the new form now here is, the new form now here is, we already, we divide x's here. So meaning we don't have x beside because that is divisible to each other. That is equal to 1. So what is the remaining term now in this example is 2 over 7. Okay. Question is can we do a uh, direct substitution method now? Yes. Okay. So what? Well, let's uh, find the limit 1 by 1. What is the limitation of 2 as x approaches to 0? That is still 2. Why? Constant rule. Okay, limitation of 2 as x approaches to 0, 2. This is multiplication, multiplication. What is the limitation of sine 2x over 2x as x approaches to 0? Our uh, limit rules, that is equal to 1. Simply 2x and 2x are equal. That is times 1. All over, what is the limitation of 7 as x approaches to 0? That is 7. Constant rule. Times but the limitation of sine, I uh, know this is not 2x, this is 7x. Limitation of sine 7x over 7x as x over 0. Same rule with our numerator that is also 1. Okay? So 2 times 1 that is 2. 7 times 1 that is 7. Therefore, the limit of our function is now 2 over 7. That's how you solve every time you encounter that kind of function okay so that's example number two still we use what limit we use the limit of sine x over x as x approaches to zero that is equal to one okay that's example number two